Cold War Don and Eastern European Pawn. I am, as always, your host, Christopher Paul Dugdale, MEDMA. We are Duncanville High School in these United States. And today is April 13th, 2021. And on this date in history, in 1865, so 156 years ago, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in Washington, D.C., part of a great conspiracy that included about nine other people. And uh, the, the plan was to kill uh, Lincoln, uh, Grant, Seward, and uh, Vice President Andrew uh, Johnson the same day. Uh, ultimately, the only person that was killed that day was Lincoln, which was obviously a great tragedy. And uh, But later, uh, John Wilkes Booth was captured. So, yay. Yay. I'll talk to you soon. Everyone have a good day. And uh, we're in the last unit. So what you're looking at here is what's called the Grand Alliance. This is between the U.S., the Soviets, and Great Britain. Uh, this is only uh, a relationship of convenience. The only goal is to defeat Hitler. A very weak foundation, and a lot of that has to do with the following things. Number one, the Allies helped the White Army during the Russian Revolution. So the Mensheviks that were fighting the Bolsheviks... The White Army that's fighting the Red Army, we're helping out the Mensheviks and the White Army uh, because we are against communism. And that is something that the United States will actively fight into, into about 2011, 2012, where we're still fighting the uh, communists in Cuba. And I guess to a certain extent in the last two years also, whenever uh, any type of uh, trade was... Uh, cut between the two countries. Uh, number two, the U.S. didn't recognize the Soviet Union for 15 years. So the Soviet Union was established in 1918 following the uh, October Revolution, and uh, the U.S. doesn't recognize it until 1933 when FDR was in power. Now, FDR did this, and this helps bridge a lot of the gap between the Soviet Union and the U.S., but not everything. Uh, number three, uh, when the uh, when things were going down in Munich uh, during the Munich Agreement, uh, it's Britain, France, and uh, and Germany, okay, uh, and it's a fight over the Sudetenland. The Soviet Union is ignored during all of that. So, uh, as Hitler's going on power grabs in Europe, uh, and Europe's trying to take take care of this or take control of it without any type of consultation with the Soviet Union, which just helps to sour these relationships. And then number four, the Stalin and Hitler, uh, the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact, where they d agreed not to fight and to divide Poland. Uh, whenever this becomes common knowledge, this makes this, uh, this alliance between the two countries that much worse. Now, you now, the United Nations. Uh, this is an uh, international peacekeeping organization based out of New York. Every country in the world that is interested in having a seat at this uh, organization has the right to have a seat at this organization. Uh, every nation in the world that's part of this is allowed to vote. However, the largest nations of Britain, France, China, the Soviets, and uh, the U.S., if I didn't mention them, all have veto power and are in charge, of, in charge of the Security Council. And this was, uh, this was put together so that you can prevent any major wars from happening again uh, on the Earth. So uh, that also means that every nation on Earth has, a, uh, has an embassy in New York. Uh, some of them are the size of a room. Some of them are several acres. And it just depends on how big your nation is and how much money you have to put into your uh, embassy in New York. Now, the Potsdam Conference. Uh, this actually is, is gonna be a little bit different from 
the Yalta Conference. Uh, this takes place with a different group of people. Uh, Stalin's still there, but Truman takes over for FDR because FDR is dead. Uh, this is about three months after FDR dies, and this is after the Soviets, or not the Soviets, after the Nazis have been defeated. Uh, also there you have uh, British Labor uh, Prime Minister Clement Attlee. Okay? Uh, he was put in power over uh, Winston Churchill, although Churchill would be voted back in a few years later. Okay, and so at this meeting they agree to hold uh, war crimes trials for all the leaders of Germany, uh, Italy, and, uh, and, and Japan that had committed war crimes. Uh, Stalin wants heavy reparations because of the decimation of the Soviet population, uh, which about 20 million people will die defending the Soviet Union as well as the destruction of property and uh, well, forced re relocation of thousands and thousands of people due to the invading German armies. Uh, Truman says no to this and then tells him about the atomic bomb. Uh, and he tells him in a way that it is a threat. And as a result, this is going to help sour relations between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Okay, so, uh, the Cold War, this is an era of confrontation competition between the U.S. and Soviet Union from about 1946 to 1990. You might be able to extend it from 1945 to 1991. It doesn't really matter. Now, this goes throughout the world, into Asia, into Africa, and the Middle East, and Latin America. And so, as a result of all of this, you have... You know, this you have massive amounts of money poured into defense for the United States and massive amounts of money poured into it for the Soviet Union. And this is something that you cannot financially keep up with. Now, uh, just looking at a few different terms here, you've heard the term uh, third world country before. Well, let's look at the difference here. Okay, first world country, you have a liberal democracy, you have free markets, and... Uh, you know, for the most part, you're talking about Western Europe, all of our allies in Western Europe, and also you're talking about the United States. Uh, second world nations, these are communist nations. This will include the Soviet Union, China, and any other communist nation. There's one party rule, and they're perceived to have a lower standard of living than first world countries. Then finally, you have third world countries, which are less developed nations, uh, they uh, these will be in uh, South America, in Asia, and in Africa, and in several uh, Pacific islands, and you can find it on on most continents in the world. Okay, so Stalinization. Okay, so communism and socialism was welcomed in Eastern Europe many times at the point of a tank, okay, and armies and the threat of nuclear weapons. And Stalin becomes a, uh, starts to lead a massive purge uh, of anyone that opposes him. Okay, there are uh, one-party police states that exist in Eastern Europe, and all of these are really under the control of the Communist Party. They control speech, culture, religion, and really all of all of the ideas and concepts that do not support uh, communist ideas are outlawed. Uh, planned economy. So East Germany is focusing heavily on industrialization. In fact, it will really become the uh, the industrial leader of the Soviet bloc all the nations that are really under the purview and control of the Soviet Union. Okay. Uh, Romania is in charge of oil production, uh, access to a lot of oil, well, a lot of oil in, Bul in uh, Romania. Uh, Bulgaria is very focused on agriculture. So there's this real push in the Soviet-controlled territories for this collectivization of agriculture. Okay. 
Uh, Eastern European states redistributed land to peasants and they forced everyone to work in these communal farms, uh, these collectivized farms where you were forced to have a certain amount of production and if you didn't have that level of production then they would take every bit of food you have and starve you to death over the next year or two years as you're not allowed to go to anyone else for help and, and basically it gets rid of the weakest the weakest farmers or especially the farmers that they did not care for uh, rebuilding Western Europe okay so Europe was devastated by World War World War two okay uh, all of the almost all the colonies around the world of everyone except for Britain and France uh, they were surrendered and lost during this time and uh, but at the same time they didn't have to spend all their money defending all these territories that were really no longer under their purview uh, the war ends all these different nationalist movements throughout Europe and it works towards a political unity and everything in Europe is, is in, in ruins. Anything from infrastructure and government, uh, many of the leaders of the countries were, were killed uh, during this time and many that were left just weren't the same type of people before. Uh, currency was in ruin and trade was in ruin. And there were 30 to 50 million refugees that, that had no place to go, including a lot of displaced Germans that were kicked out of territory that they had before. And uh, the Soviets held several million German uh, prisoners of war in camps for the next five to ten years. Um, not a lot of people would, would return, and many that were, were, by the time they got back, most things had been rebuilt and restored to a different state than they, they would have recognized whenever they left. Okay, so uh, Britain is starting to work for full employment of all of the population. Uh, the social welfare state ensures that everyone is taken care of. Uh, they're trying to create free markets and, uh, and government regulation. They're going to nationalize key industries, uh, including the Bank of England. Okay, So what they're trying to do is get everything together under one umbrella, one organization so that everyone has a job, everyone has access to most of the necessities of life. Now this isn't necessarily meaning that everyone's going to live a, a good life making really good money, but everyone's going to have a job and some level of minimum, minimum support from the, uh, from the government. Uh, socialized medicine. Uh, this is going to require doctors to work with state hospitals but they could still maintain their private practice. And this is one of the uh, things that really becomes a model for what uh, many people that want to create the type, same type of system in the United States, they're going to use this as a model for doing the same thing. So, <coughs> Palestine was a British mandate, okay, or a British colony. And uh, they decided to go ahead and partition it and uh, they created Israel for the uh, Zionist and this is going to start a series of wars that have taken place over the last 70 years and uh, you'll see Israel's territory grow and several pushes for people in the area uh, to push for the continued uh, genocide of the, of the Jews. Uh, India. Okay, so there's a real push in India for independence from Great Britain. The Hindus want it and so do the Muslims. Okay, so uh, Gandhi, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, he is going to lead a movement uh, using passive, uh, passive nonviolent resistance. Okay, so no violence, uh, hunger strikes, uh, protests, uh, but, but nothing with any, any level of violence. And Britain is going to partition India into two nations. Uh, the Muslims will get Pakistan and the, uh, the Hindus will get India. 
and within a short period of time, both nations will become nuclear powers. Okay, so that's Pakistan and uh, and and India and India. Okay. Uh, more than a million people are going to die as Muslims and Hindus flood across the border. And this will include uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Now, uh, Jawahar uh, Nehru is going to keep India, India blah, I can say everything but India, uh, neutral in the Cold War. And this is going to cause massive problems with the United States, which really wanted them to take one side or the other. One thing I forgot to mention earlier with uh, Gandhi was the fact that uh, during the short time that uh, India had as a as a nation following its partition by by Great Britain, uh, Gandhi was trying to accommodate some of the problems that were taking place between India and Pakistan uh, in the creation of their nations. Uh, one person by by the name of Nathuram Godse. Uh, Hindu nationalist uh, decided that he had a major problem with the way that Gandhi was doing things and he would assassinate him on January the 30th 1948 by putting uh, three bullets into his chest and, and killing him and uh, but but Gandhi and his works would be very influential in the formation of several other civil rights movements throughout the world and to this day he is revered for the work that he did Egypt in 1918, there was an organization called the WAFD, and it was organized for the independence of the nation. They're going to kick out the British by 1952, and Gamal Abdul Nasser uh, is going to nationalize the Suez Canal and overthrow the British uh, that who had originally supported uh, King Farouk. Okay. And this is going to lead to an invasion of Egypt by Britain, France, and Israel until the U.S. and Soviets stepped in and, uh, and prevented this, them from retaking this, this, this area. And this moment in history really is going to reduce uh, Great Britain from being a world power to not being less than a world power, but, but not having the same type of... Uh, the same type of position globally that they did before. Uh, Nasser, while in power, is going to promote pan-Arabism or Arab unity and uh, for a brief moment he will unite Egypt and Syria. But just briefly. Now, Kwame uh, Nkrumah uh, he formed the uh, Convention People's Party, the first African political party. And Jomo uh, Ken uh, Kenyatta, he starts the Kenya African National Union, and they're going to fight for uh, for self-rule. And we'll we'll get back into to both of them here a little bit later. Uh, the uh, the Mau Mau movement was used by the Kikui. Uh, who used terrorism to get independence in 1959. Okay, in South Africa, uh, several Africans will uh, form what's called the, the African National Congress. And this is to uh, fight for uh, equal education, uh, political and economic reform. All of this in South Africa. The majority of people that lived in South Africa were Africans. Uh, but they were being ruled by a minority of the white population. Uh, the white population had created a system of segregation called the apartheid. And uh, the leader of this uh, group that was against the apartheid, the ANC, you know, the ANC, the African National Congress, uh, was led by Nelson Mandela, who was put in jail for 28 years. And uh, he's finally freed in 1990, and 
uh, really is uh, recognized globally for for what he did. Uh, he will eventually uh, come to lead South Africa in the years that followed. Uh, the Dutch East Indies, uh, they were finally liberated by Japan uh, before World War II started. And uh, then on these islands, the Indonesian Nationalist Party was led by uh, Sukarno, and he fights for independence. Uh, the Dutch Netherlands or Holland, whatever you want to refer them to, is going to give up and they're going to focus on what they're doing in Europe at the time. Uh, Sukarno is going to get help from the Chinese because he does need support to take control of all the country and uh, he's trying to make it into a communist nation but then the uh, conservative Muslims are going to overthrow him and they're going to create a pro-Western government. Right now that's one of the five largest na nations in the world by population. Over 300 million people live on the islands. Uh, the Belgium combo, com combo, the what? Belgian Congo. Uh, so Belgian, Belgium, if you remember, in the early part of the 19th century, uh, the late part, sorry, the latter part of the 19th century is going to enslave and basically steal everything of value from uh, the Belgian Congo. And uh, it's, it's not controlled by Belgium, but by the king himself, uh, Leopold. Okay, well, Belgium finally going to pull out in 1960. And Mobutu uh, Seseko uh, is going to rule it as a brutal uh, dictator. And this violence uh, from his reign is going to spill out into Burundi and Rwanda. Uh, Italy, after World War II, they get rid of the monarchy and replace it with the republic. Uh, they're going to modernize the economy. But the 1970s is going to be a hard time to be in Italy because of uh, all the problems with uh, trade with oil. Okay? And OPEC's, uh, basically OPEC's, uh, the fact that OPEC starts a trade embargo. Now, they're led by someone by the name of uh, Giulio Andriotti. And he was elected uh, six times, and he brings stability. Nothing like being elected several times in a row to either bring stability or bring corruption. But in this case, this is uh, this is something that's brought by him. Euro communism is uh, something that's centered in uh, Italy, and this is a real anti-communist group. They're against both Soviet communism and Marxist communism, any type of communism uh, without a revolution. Uh, more of a, uh, pr they're, they're trying to undermine uh, communism throughout, uh, throughout Europe. This group is, that's, that's based mainly out of uh, Italy, but there's also groups that follow the same type of ideology in uh, Spain and France. Now, Alcide de uh, Gaspari, uh, he's an Italian Christian Democratic Prime Minister. And uh, he creates a new parliamentary system to try and, uh, try and create a stable government in Italy. And eventually he is going to get Italy to join NATO in their fight against uh, communism. Now, uh, following World War II, there was a push through, you know, for most nations through, throughout the, uh, the rest of the world. And uh, this, this was to try and uh, replace the population that had died during World War II. 
Uh, in some, some countries, they also started a process of neonatalism that's going to have the nation subsidize additional births, uh, create infant uh, nutrition, uh, have daycare, and uh, this is going to help increase the population by 25%. Uh, German and Eastern European populations have actually been in decline since 1990. And in addition to uh, genocide and uh, World War I, World War II, and, and other revolutions, uh, the birth control pill also helps reduce the, uh, the birth rate, but we are growing at a very exponential rate. In fact, in the years following uh, World War uh, II, uh, the world population had, has really exploded. By 1960, there were 3 billion people on the planet. We didn't have a billion people on Earth until 1833. Uh, uh, 1928, you had 2 billion. 1960, you have 3 billion. 1975, 4 billion. 1987, 5 billion. 99, 6 billion. And 7 billion by 2011. And right now, we're sitting at somewhere near uh, 7.8 billion people. The Marshall Plan. Okay, uh, the U.S. would give money to Europe to help them re rebuild to stop the spread of communism. Again, everything here is to fight communism and to rebuild strong democracies that will help the U.S. prevent the spread of communism. So we re help all these countries rebuild. Now, if you look at this uh, at the, at the map or not the map, but on the chart on the right, outside of Turkey and Greece, all of those countries are in Western Europe. Okay, so no money is really going to anyone except for countries that are naturally going to be on the U.S. side. Now, we do offer the money to all nations to rebuild, but it's turned down by the Soviet Union and all of its satellite nations. So it's basically our way of rebuilding. Now, was it worth it? That would be a question for you to think about. And on the... Uh, Eastern Europe. The uh, Soviet Union uh, had replaced the governments of Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary with uh, communist nations uh, under their leadership. So basically, they did whatever the Soviets told them to do. Uh, the correct term for this is actually satellite nation. And so the United States had the same thing, except they called them protectorates. Uh, you can see a, ma a major difference in terminology between what we use for the Soviet Union and what we use for, uh, for Americans or, or from people that the Americans do business with. We're in a place where we protect them, while the Soviets are more of a satellite uh, that they control them like satellites. Uh, a distant influence, but ever deadly, and with the potential to destroy the Earth and everyone that lives on it. Uh, there was a, a civil war that happened in Greece in the 1940s, and uh, there were several communist factions that were part of this. But the U.S. is going to spend $400 million in Greece uh, that, that stops not only the uh, revolution in Greece, but also in Turkey. Uh, this is done by clandestine groups like the uh, Central Intelligence Agency, which were recently formed by the uh, United States. Uh, Czechoslovakia. Okay. Uh, so, uh, non-communists were removed from, uh, from office in a coup d'etat. Uh, their leader, uh, Jan uh, Masiryk, was found dead outside of his window as if he had jumped. But it seemed pretty, uh, pretty evident that, uh, that, it was, that it actually was a murder. Uh, in Yugoslavia, 
Uh, Joseph uh, Bros or uh, or Joseph Tito. Uh, he creates a communist nation separate from the Soviet Union. They're a little bit more decentralized, and uh, the political system gave local communities more power. But he was able to operate this nation because uh, and and operate as an ally to the Soviet Union. They allowed him to do that. Uh, that was the only nation that chose to be a communist before the Soviets took them over. Uh, that leads us to the end of the of the day today. Uh, we're getting really close to the end of the year, so everyone just hold on, hold tight, and uh, we'll be through all of this soon. In the meantime, everyone have a great day. Please don't cocaine, please don't AIDS, and please don't COVID. Okay? Everyone be safe, but don't be as safe, and I will see you soon. This is Mr. Doug Dell signing out.